inside of the car became hot, but Hades did not complain. His eyes remained fixed on the forest on the side of the road. The night was almost a tangible thing there beneath the towering branches. He concentrated, staring at the trees. This must be the turnoff, Nareev offered as he slowed down and squinted ahead on the road. He checked the odometer. Yes, shall I take it, sir? Hades did not answer. Instead, he sat still. He sensed something in the trees. It was far off, but it was a human presence. Nereev eventually brought the car to a full halt before the entrance to the secondary road, which branched off to the right, cutting a wide path through the trees. It was unpaved and rocky and, without forewarning, could easily be missed. Nereev sat patiently waiting an answer. Ignoring the human, Hades pressed his face up against the cold window. He narrowed his eyes, trying to hone in on the sensation. He listened intently but could pick up no sounds over the purr of the engine. Without a word, Hades opened the door and stepped out of the car. Nareev turned to watch him, not knowing what else to do. The wind blew cold again. Hades took a few steps toward the trees and smiled. He could sense it clearer now. It was his prey. Hades gestured for Nareev to join him outside. The human shifted the car into park, pulled on his gloves, and opened the door. Immediately, two large hands grabbed him by his shoulders with a sudden quickness and pulled him from his seat. The middle of his back was slammed against the roof of the car as he stared, terrified, at the large figure before him. Nareev struggled briefly but was held firmly as if in a vice. He grasped Hades' arms, clutching them so he would not be dropped. Hades held the man in the air, balancing him against the car, and leaned in close enough to feel Nareev's frosty breath on his nose. Fear and confusion radiated out of the mortal like vapors. I was sent to kill two men this night, Hades hissed, staring directly into Nareev's eyes, trying to intimidate him. One is a man I have never met. The other is you. Nareev tried to stutter a response, but could not. Blowing snow hit him across the face. I do not know why. I doubt you do. Nareev shook his head back and forth fiercely. His eyes were wide in terror. Hades pulled his head back and continued, still holding the human aloft. Flakes of snow stuck to his beard. That was one of my orders. But I do not take orders. Hades cocked his head and listened. He could hear what he had been searching for now. He returned his attention to Nareev. Maybe I will kill only one man tonight. P please, Nareev stammered. Please don't kill me. Hades raised one of his hands and put it on Nareev's head. The young man yelped in fear, but Hades' wide palm merely brushed the snow from the human's eyes. After a pause, Hades said very directly, I could murder you very easily. Do you realize that? Nareev nodded quickly. That is enough. Hades let the man drop. Nareev fell back into the driver's seat, his legs dangling outside the car door. Hades bent down and pressed a finger against the man's chest. You will wait here for me until I return. It may not be until the sun rises, but I will return. If you are not here, I will hunt you down and kill you and your sister. Is that clear? Nareev nodded again. I can protect you. I can arrange for you to disappear without a trace. You will be thought dead by those in Moscow, but you will live still. You will have a new life and a small fortune. The choice is yours. Leave and die later. Stay now and live. With that, Hades turned and began to walk down the side road, leaving a petrified Nareev alone in the idling sedan.
Hades looked up and could see a few stars shining through the small gaps in the snow clouds. The forest surrounded the road. He concentrated and searched out the human presence as he walked. It was a few hundred feet off. One, no, two. Two warm bodies full of thoughts and feelings. Perfect. Hades walked on, and after turning on a small bend, he saw his final destination. A small house was tucked neatly away from the main road. It was a two-story building that sat on a low hill cleared of trees. A twisted path ran up to a small front door. A thin stream of smoke wafted out of a squat chimney on the roof. Hades smiled and squinted. Lights in two different windows confirmed the sensations he was receiving. There was one person in an upstairs room and another in a ground floor room at the back of the house. Calmly, Hades walked up the path, mounted the sagging porch, and silently turned the handle on the front door. The lock snapped easily, and Hades entered the house, quickly shutting the door behind him so that none of the cold air might follow him in. He stood in a small vestibule. To his right, a narrow wooden staircase wound up toward the ceiling. To his left, a parlor sat beyond a wide doorway warmed by a small fire purring in the stone fireplace. Hades walked forward down a dim hallway toward the human he sensed in the back of the house. His boots made heavy thumping noises on the wooden floor that echoed off the bare enclosing walls of the hallway. He passed two closed rooms and an entrance to a dark kitchen before the corridor ended at a half-open door. Light flooded out from around its edges. Hades pushed it open and walked directly into the bright room beyond, nudging the door shut behind him. He was in a cluttered study, lit by a few oil lamps and heated by a glowing stove in the corner. A short man about fifty years of age stopped where he was, replacing a book on an overcrowded shelf, and turned to see Hades as he entered. In one fluid movement, Hades pulled a snub 12-gauge shotgun from a thigh holster hidden under his long coat and pointed its barrel at the old man. He clicked the hammer back with his thumb and stood stiffly. Good evening, Dr. Litasova, he growled. The old man stood motionless, one arm still resting on the bookshelf. His eyes darted from the gun to Hades and back. A messy desk was the only barrier between them. After a shocked moment, the human asked in a low, trembling voice, Why are you here? What do you want? Those are two different matters, Doctor. I was sent here to kill you, but I also wish to talk to you. About what? Dr. Litasova slowly stood up straight. Your work. Hades' gaze drifted to the window Dr. Litasova was standing before. Outside, the snow fell heavier. He looked back at the man. And if you answer my questions correctly and courteously, then perhaps I will reconsider blowing a hole clean through you. Do you understand? Dr. Litasova nodded. Good. Good. 